Hello and welcome to another episode of Building Minnesota Rocker. I am Ashley, aka Midnight. Uh, I'm the director of content here for the team. Love content, love directing things. Brett Diamond is here, chief operating officer for uh, Minnesota Rocker and version one, which is amazing. And we've got a brand new face on the podcast today. It's Lamar, aka Accuracy. Um, the newest, well, I mean, we have a whole new uh, starting roster for Minnesota Rocker, so you're the newest of the new. Uh, Lamar, thanks yeah. for joining us today. How, how are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, I'm excited to be here, excited to talk about everything. How are you doing? Good, good. Um, we're excited. Good. Oh, go ahead, Brett. No, I'm saying good. Good to have you on. Super stoked. Um, I'm super stoked, actually, and I wanted to get your immediate take on this. Obviously, the Cold War beta happened last weekend we've played a little bit of the alpha i think it's actually they've, they're turning the servers on maybe right now as we speak i'm not sure um but the beta is starting up again this weekend what are you feeling going into it do you do you love love where the game's at so far in terms of beta and new cod or what are you thinking about the new call of duty okay so i haven't played uh the new the beta this weekend yet the servers are up and they did make some changes to issues that I had with the game personally with like the movement and some of the gun balancing. Um, so they're addressing those issues, which makes me, you know, happy and like I'm looking forward to that. So from what I've heard though, from the people that have been playing is that they are moving in the right direction with fixing the sliding mechanic and the movement issues and also moving in the right direction with nerfing the guns that were, you know, clearly being OP and abused throughout the last weekend's beta. So is the Melissa Milano patch? Is that what happened? I'm not. Been yeah, they up. nerfed it a little bit. They nerfed it a little bit, and I haven't like played yet to see like how impactful the nerf actually was. But the fact that they already in one week registered that there were these issues and uh, fixed them that quickly uh, is super, super like makes me feel very optimistic about the season. As an AR player, are you like low key hype every time they nerf a sub? <laughs> I mean, I have a lot of sub players on my team. You know, I have Preston and Dylan. Like, they're super elite, so I don't want them to get nerfed too much. You know, I want them to thrive and be superstars. So, but I personally like. I feel like I'm not one of the players that has like that strong bias towards AR or sub or whatever. I just want what's best for the game, actually, for competitive. Like, I don't care if it makes me worse personally or whatever it is. But if it makes the game genuinely, logically better, then I'm all for it. Well, love that. Which which AR were you playing with last weekend? Uh, I was using the XM4 a lot and the M16. The M16 was actually, like, low-key, super, super, super good. Like, if you're accurate, you could get some nice one burst, like, consistently. I am not accurate. Uh, <laughs> my name is not accuracy. I was triple bursting people with the M16 on satellite and just not getting the kills. I was kind of pissed. But, no, it, it, it's really fun. I think for, for this year especially, you know, Trey Arc's back uh, on kind of a surprise as well. Like, that's massive. Talk about, like, how important is it for the developers of the game to kind of support not just not just the game's, like, needs as far as what's OP and what's not in terms of public matches, but in terms of competitive and CDL, how important is it to have a, a strong developer who knows what's going on? It's extremely, extremely important because, like, as pros, you know, we play to break the game. We're going to find out every little thing that they left in that was messed up or that can be abused, and we're going to use it and do it. So, but that's not the way it should be. We shouldn't be playing a game where we can abuse all these little bugs and advantages. So the fact that they're very invested and competitive makes it to where they will work stopping those uh, abuses and all that stuff to make it like a fair, extremely fair, like even playing field, where it's just purely on the competitive aspect and not on those little uh, things that you can abuse. Uh, that's such a fascinating aspect to me of, of esports that I it makes a ton of sense, but I didn't necessarily expect being new to the, to this role a year ago, but it makes all the sense in the world, right? Like every player is a competitor and you're going to, you're going to try to, to find every, you know, every movement mechanic, everything that, yeah. that you can possibly do to, you know, to create an advantage. And that's, that's that concept is so fascinating to me that you know you, you guys get your hands on the game for the first time and it's just okay what you know like what are, what do you think like the first time you're in the game what's going through your head uh, uh, with a new game like what do you what do you what are you immediately going to do to to check out and get a feel for it the first thing is find out what the best weapons are find out what weapon combination with attachments is op now that we have gunsmith you know Up down like 
memorize the spawn system and move from there. But also, like, right when you load in and you're playing your first couple games, you're noticing, like, those little things, like I was saying, like, the movement abuses you can do, the way jump shotting feels, the way what what mechanic you have to abuse in what situation to win that gunfight or win that situation. Because it's not always going to be jump shotting. It's not always going to be sliding. It's not always going to be, you know, laying down in every situation. You have to be able to pick which one you're going to use in what situation. And then you'll get like a feel of that as it goes. And then it becomes just muscle memory. In this gunfight, you always jump shot, you'll win it. If in this gunfight, you always slide, you'll win it, you know? That's, that's so interesting. Do, like, can you figure that out almost instantly? Or do you have to get in a couple gunfights with somebody of similar skill level? Yeah, no, you got you to gotta get some reps like against someone that can actually like shoot at your level. Because if when you're playing people that are like below, like, you know, like, you know, normal pubs or like something like that, uh, the positioning and the mechanics don't really matter as much because they can have all the positioning in the world and you can still just get the free kill on them. But when you play people, obviously, that uh, are really good, then you know the true, like, situation. Okay, if someone's sitting here or doing this and they're shooting very well, you find out what you need to do to be able to win that situation or that gunfight. I think that's so crucial too. It's it's really cool every year to obviously. I mean, I've been a COD enthusiast for like oh since two thousand and eight, two thousand nine. Like it's been every year. I look forward to fall time, the new COD coming out and learning it. But it's been really special to see just especially now, like working like closer with the players at a, a professional like Call of Duty organization, seeing like what the approach is and how you guys really actually like do that. Like it's a grind fest at the beginning of the game yeah. uh, to make sure that like, you're the one setting the the curve for the rest of the, the pro community. I think that's one of the most interesting aspects about pro COD that really, if you think about it, no other esport has like, yeah, there are big updates that can happen to games and there's seasons with different content, but we have all that in COD. Plus, there's a new game every year to learn, new maps and everything. So, on a kind of on that thought, uh, accuracy. What's, in your opinion, the number one best thing for competitive that a game can come out with? Is it the gun balance, the maps, the engine of how the movement feels? What's like, what tees up competitive in your mind when you think about a new COD coming out? Uh, number one thing for me is maps. Uh, if you have good maps, everything else comes with it, like the flow, the uh, you know the game, the way the game plays out, the strategies that go involved that are involved in everything. I think when you have great maps, everything will fall in line. Like it just that's the most important thing because that's the major first thing you like feel about the game that controls every aspect of the game. Super true. Wait, what? So give me just a quick top three, and then I do want to ask you about like your competitive career and and how we got okay. here and all that. Okay. A stuff. quick top three of Call of Duty maps that I think are the best. Yeah, like what's the best maps in your opinion? Okay, uh, raid standoff that's my top two for sure locked in and then i'll do a more recent one um i really liked arsenal from black ops 4 really that's interesting the yeah. i keep man i it said i couldn't remember what one that was and i was asking my chat i was like that one where methods got in the awkward gunfight and the statue. <laughs> uh, I, yeah. I felt bad to put him on blast like that but yeah, yeah that one was actually really fun i think that was for all game modes too right it was yeah control, that's yeah we search, did it for all game modes hard point yeah. What, do you think, I know it's hard in a beta because we're looking at such a limited like version of the game and especially like with Call of Duty's recently, it seems like they're trying to cater to everybody. Like they're trying to make this as broadly appealing as possible. They've kind of taken some larger like game mode type things like like from Battlefield, you see those those higher number of players in the lobby and there's those different type of maps which like to me, that's not Call of Duty. Like that's not, so, yeah. I mean it, it could belong though, but for 6v6 maps, and you look at the multiplayer maps and what we've had access to so far in the beta, it's only been a few of them, I think four of them. Is there any one that sticks out to you as okay for competitive? I look at Moscow and think yeah, that, but is that the only one? That's, in my opinion, that's the only one, unless they do some major changes to Cartel with those bushes. Um, <laughs> if they fix the bush situation on Cartel, I think it could be used. But for now, Moscow is definitely the best map we've played so far in the game. And it's so good and it's like yeah i can't even fully describe i mean everyone says yeah three lane maps those are what you should do but it's not even just that it's how the the spots and the lines of sight kind of interact on that yeah map. exactly that I really love. It's, dope. it's the way the fights go down in the lanes and this and that everything like works works well on that map yeah, I agree. All right, Lamar, real quick, we're actually going to throw to a segment uh, with Christy from Gamers.Vote. She joined us here on the podcast today to talk about 
voting, how important it is. So, past me, take it away. Thank you, future self, for throwing it to current self. Uh, I'm here today with Brett, obviously, still, and we've got Christy on from Gamers.Vote, which is a really important initiative that uh, Minnesota Rocker and V1 have partnered up with um, Gamers Vote this year to obviously get gamers to vote. Christy, um, are you able to kind of shed some light on what Gamers Vote is and, and why is it so important uh, for, for gamers to get involved? Sure, Ashley. Uh, again, thank you guys for having me. Uh, we are a nonpartisan nonprofit in the pro-democracy space for gamers. Uh, and so with that, we are just about the active participation. We're not for any party or person. We're just about the act of going to register to vote, going out to vote, helping your friends know how to take action, right? Uh, and so with that, we have... Um, partners ranging from publishers, developers, um, esports teams, esports organizations, third-party tournament organizers, uh, we have tabletop communities, mobile gamers, and so with that we help um, create, we work with a lot of nonprofits also to make sure we have the right kind of messaging and information people need to know uh, to show up on November 3rd or what they need to do for their absentee ballots, uh, and so we help create that um, community uh, information for them so they can distribute it in the way that's meaningful and impactful as opposed to just a go vote messaging. Uh, and so it's been a real honor to work with all these organizations since July. That's amazing. Uh, and, and just appreciate just the whole initiative. I mean, even me, like, like I voted my very first election was, um, I think it was the year that Obama won the, the presidency. And I was 18. And I remember going to the polls and I was so stoked just because like, I, th I really truly think that it is such a valuable part of, of our society and our democracy and I really do feel like it's it's my civic duty to vote and I really do agree or, or enjoy that you guys are kind of non nonpartisan obviously that's really important too because obviously voting is very political but it, it can get kind of wild as we all know from the times right now but I just think it's so so important that no matter who you vote for you exercise your right and I think that's that's really cool um, talk a little bit about I know you kind of every state kind of has their different way of doing things and I'm not expecting you to be a complete expert on how to get you know get stuff done in Minnesota but what are some like quick hit details that we know about voting in Minnesota like I know the registration date actually just passed this week, but I believe you could still register in person. How's that work? You are one of the very lucky states that can register on election day. So showing up on November 3rd, you can still register to vote and then go vote. That is obviously not the case in all states being very uniquely different. Even the registration deadline, the cutoffs are uh, an issue, like even registering to vote online isn't available in every state. And so that's also where I believe gamers will be really impactful as we approach the even next four years. Um, even if you've missed the, the deadline to register to vote in your state and that does not allow you to go and do that on election day, it's still really important to go register now. Like prepare yourself for midterms, prepare yourself for the next four years. It's never a bad time to register to vote. Um, but with that, I think gamers will be able to get loud about like, hey, why can't I go register online in my state and help maybe change some of that process in places like Arkansas uh, and all those those states that haven't really um, pushed for that yet. And I, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong, I believe in Minnesota, if you go to early vote, you can register on site <clears throat> there as well, the same way you can if you're voting on November 3rd. Yep. Yeah, and I actually, I just spoke with Chrissy just before we hit uh, record for this segment. I'm just, I'm still kind of finalized, like, how am I going to vote? Like, my original plan was like, yeah, I'm going to show up on election day, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you know, got my bells and whistles on, ready to do it. I just want my sticker that I'm here for the Insta post. Um, well, not really. I'm here to vote. But you know what I mean? I'm trying to make it make it grander. Um, but I, I think I actually got what I need to vote in person earlier, even just go drop off my ballot. So how important is it for, for people, if like especially if you are registered to vote, or if you are luckily in Minnesota and can register upon going, how important is it to have a plan to vote? Absolutely, it's so important. And I also think it's how you hold not yourself, not just yourself accountable, but your your friends. We've been doing kind of a squad up and vote initiative uh, with some of our partners. And it means a lot when you pick a time and a place, right, of how you're gonna do it. You bring friends with you in a COVID friendly, uh, safe way. Uh, and so figuring out what that is, it could be like just in a Discord chat and then you're gonna plan out what your next step is. Um, what I love about social media and you say like the Insta post and it's, it's great because it's actually a really great way to say, I'm going to do something and then I did it and it holds other people accountable too, right? Like you don't have to 
go extravagant on what this is. If you can just squat up with one person to figure out what you're going to do, show up. We've been preparing people to, hey, you have a switch. Uh, bring an X, make sure you have a charger in your bag. Like when you go, gamers know how to stand in lines. I think we all know from conferences or events, yeah. we definitely know how to be prepared. I think the, the next one is just making sure you have your ID and you've actually brought your ballot with you. If you had already uh, done an absentee ballot and you want to bring that with you, we were discussing that earlier, Ashley. Um, if you have changed your plan, for example, you wanted to mail it in, but you missed that opportunity, all you have to do is bring that with you when you show up in person on election day. That was actually huge, and I did not know that. Like, I have my ballot. I haven't filled it out yet, and I was just real nervous about mailing it in. I'm sure it's fine, but I really, like, I also love the act of going and being like, here is my vote. Like, I know it's getting counted. It's all about I that sticker. My, yeah, it's all about the sticker, too. It's just showing <laughs> off. Flex. I got a whole collection of them that I stick all over my house. Um, but the sorry the drop-off box is another great option right like you go to a desert you can go to your government page find out what are the designated spots to go drop it off that is a really great safe way guaranteed way to make sure that your vo your vote is counted without any incident that's awesome. yeah, I, i'm i'm planning to go i might go this weekend or or next week sometime i'm just i'm i'm gonna do it in person but i'm gonna do it early you know hopefully it won't drop them in lines but Get it, get Minnesota's it uh, early voting from like September 8th. Oh, yeah. I started yeah. real early. Like, so the election cool. is happening. Like it's not something we're still waiting for. It's literally happening. Um, well, thank you so much for coming on today. How do people kind of get in touch with like, okay, how do I create a plan to vote? Am I registered? What do I got to do? Is Do you, do they just go to the gamers.vote page or how does it look? Absolutely. Yeah, you can go to gamers.vote, make it really easy. I won't give you all the social handles. You can find us there. Um, but I mean, we're really tapped into communities. And if you found that we're not touching some part of your gaming community, uh, it's really easy. Just reach out. We will send you all the information you need to help your individual communities get the right kind of messaging for folks. And we're in this for the long haul. So after, this is a milestone election for us, even if it's monumental. And so we hope to continue to help people to know where to go, what to do, and how to act. You know, if nothing else, if people don't vote, you can't complain to your friends. You can't complain on social media. Regardless of who you support, if you don't vote, you got to just, you got to stay silent for the next four years. So, you know, if you want your voice heard, now's the time. I agree. Great, great closing uh, sentiment there, Brett. I agree. I'm so excited to vote. I've been excited to vote. Um, and especially, I mean, this election is massive. I can't uh, state how important uh, it is for for us to do our civic duty and get out there. Well, thank you, Christy, for joining us today. I really appreciate it. You have a sick guitar in the back. You got a cool setup there. That's really awesome. Very nerdy household. This is all Star Wars side, and on this side is Star Trek because it's a confusing oh, franchise. Boy. Oh, boy. You guys are, nice. you guys are yeah, going like at it, it in the living room there. That's awesome. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. Yeah, great. Great to talk again. Thanks, Christy. Best of luck the next few weeks. Lamar, you've, you've been in the Call of Duty scene for a long time, but for for the for the new fans that maybe just have have come to the scene over the last year um, and only know you from the subliners, um, give us give us the origin story, right? Talk us through sort of how you came up in the scene and 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 where you've been along the way. All right, so uh, I've been actually been thinking about it back. I've been playing for a long, long, long time. Um, so back in the day, around Modern Warfare three. Well, actually, let's start earlier than that, to be honest. I was very young playing, like, game battles matches. Uh, I played a lot of hardcore S&D, and, like, my team was really good at it. And that's all I played, like, just hardcore search and destroy on game battles. And we just had an obsession with, like, being, you know, top page or number one on the ladder. And then slowly, uh, I realized I was watching some matches, like, on YouTube. It pop up on my random stuff. And I was like, yo, there's people playing, like, big tournaments and like they're not playing snd they're playing like varian which is like respawn game modes and i was like yo that's really cool i want to get into that so what i did was when i was younger i went around on the game battles like ladder and i clicked on every single team that was like on the front page and the second page and i would click on their team check their matches what they played and i would see i, I messaged every team that i found uh that played respawn that played varian that played map gen and stuff and I just messaged every single team like, yo, like, let me try out for your team. Let me try out for your team. Let me try out for your team. And eventually like a team on like the second page responded and they were like, yeah, like come try out. And I played a kid 1v1 and he beat me. He actually beat me because I was like a hardcore player and they played uh, re like regular, not hardcore. And he beat me, but they're like, nah, we'll still pick you up. I was like, all right, perfect. This is my shot. I was like 12, 13 or something at the time. <laughs> and uh, so started playing with them and then just got more into it that way. 
and then I be got into like the amateur scene after that, like of actual competitive. And during Mono for three, I was probably I feel like I was like fourteen, fifteen at the time, I think. And I wanted to travel to you know tournaments that they were having locals around America. And my parents were like, "No, nah, like you're not going to travel to some random state or city to play video games." So for that whole year, I was begging him, my dad, to let me go. He's like, "No, no, no, like." Go to school. Like, what are you talking about? You have we have homework to do. And then uh, the next season after that, uh, Black Ops Two. I finally convinced him after annoying him for like three months straight to let me go to a tournament. And he's like, "Okay, I'll take you to your first tournament, but I'm only taking you so you can see that it's a waste of time and you'll quit after." I was like, "All right, pops, let's go." And he gets on a flight with me to Dallas and. The rest is history. <laughs> that, that, that's awesome. That that's one of my favorite things to talk with players and and their families about is just like that, mo like what that interaction was like. The point at which a parent was like, "Oh, oh, oh, this is this is real." Like, and yeah. you know, like this is a career. This is like this is legit. Wait, but he didn't think it was legit after that. <laughs> it took, <laughs> took a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it still took a while because for many years after that, I was still uh, and they still made me go to school while competing. So I was in school for chemical engineering and then while competing and trying to win tournaments. And then during World War II, I won the first tournament while I was still in school. And like I got MVP and everything. And I was like, oh, this is my chance. So I told my dad, like, look, like, give me like some time. Like, let me just commit to the school thing. Like, I just won a tournament. And I got MVP. Like, let me ride this way. Let me see what I can do. And um, it's actually funny if you go to my Twitter later, my media I tweeted a screenshot of what my dad said in the group chat. He was like, Yeah, like congrats, everything, but he's like, School is still more important. I was like, No. <laughs> um, and then eventually he's like, Okay, look, I'll give you one semester off. Like, take one semester off, see what happens the rest of the season, and then you have to come back like for school after. I was like, All right, bet. But he gave me that one semester and then I never looked back. <laughs> That's great. What and how old were you at that point? Um that was that like two years ago three years ago i was probably like 21 around there 21 22 maybe yeah it's, it's so interesting you know I, when i'm talking to people that aren't familiar with esports everybody sort of naturally makes you know tries to make traditional sports comparisons yeah um, but that that path has always struck me that it's more like um what you see from ath from traditional sports athletes that are like competing in olympic sports and that sort of thing where you know, like if you're the best football player in the state of Minnesota, like you're probably going to play high school football. And then if you're good enough, you're going to play college football. And then if you're good enough, you can keep on going. But with yeah. like that path that you describe in free sports, it's really more like if you're, you know, an incredible gymnast or swimmer or ch not just sports, like chess player or whatever, like at some point, the you as a person and your parents have to sort of make that decision that you're going to dedicate your time to that craft, whatever that thing is. And it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's such a, it's, it requires so much more dedication and thought from the player and, and even their family than, you know, than that sort of very obvious path. If you're, you know, a, a football player or whatever. Yeah, Cause you're still in school at that point. Like you're yeah. still progressing in multiple avenues, but with this, it's kind of like you can progress in multiple avenues, but it's very, very hard to compete at the highest level doing that so you kind of need that but the truth is that everyone that does it should do it that way you should progress in multiple avenues in your life and then once you get like that boost that moment that highlight moment for you where you know okay this is my shot like i need to commit now that's when they should do it i don't recommend people to like not you know go to school or not do anything and they just fully commit themselves at the moment and say no i'm just gonna make it pro because the truth yeah. is it's very very hard and it's like a very unique system and way to get in so you should you know, establish yourself in multiple avenues and then commit when you get like a big moment that you think you can capitalize on. Yeah, that's, that's really good advice. Cause at the end of the day, it's, you know, you, you have to be so good, so elite at what you're doing um, to, to play at this level. And, you know, I've had, I've had people come up to me at events or something and, you know, I mean, I don't know if anybody's good enough, right. Even if I'm watching them, yeah. um, but you know, they say how to like the first question I ask, like, are you like, do you think you're, do you think you're good enough is really the first thing that people need to ask themselves in anything. Yeah. Right? And are they willing to dedicate themselves the way, you know, the way you and, and other pro players have, like, first of all, can you, you know, do you have this, this, the, 
the natural skill to accomplish it? And then are you willing to dedicate yourself to, um, you know, to that level of, um, you know, to that, to accomplishing that it's, it's not easy. I think it's also a lot harder now because since they made the rules like 18 plus, um, when people get in that stage of their life, like 18 and older, life gets real around that point. You're either like going to school or getting a job or like whatever you're doing in your life is like serious. And you can like, you can mess around a little bit, but not like too much. You know, you're kind of doing real life important things after high school. So you can't like, it's hard to dedicate and commit your time to, you know, fully into gaming and trying to make it during that portion of your life. Like we got lucky and blessed at the time because there wasn't the 18 plus rule. So like we got our grassroots like started when we were like 14, 15, 13, like, you know, a little bit around there when if you invest a lot of time in something, it's not the end of the world. Like, cause you're still in high school, you're still super young. Like you can still do everything before life gets serious for you. Yeah, that's that's one of the the points that that I see a lot. Like it's it's they have to wait till eighteen until they can really like give a full like push like into the yeah. variant scene and to get taken seriously and recognized by their peers. And also like I mean, especially now, like if you look at like challengers this year is gonna be freaking nuts, dude. We had yeah. all the teams downsizing by a player, so you already have starter caliber players who are going to either unsigned or just probably going to be forced to compete in the challengers tournaments. Do you think that to get to see success in the challengers scene, like, do you have to like full blown, like, okay, I need a year off from college. I'm going to go hard. Or do you think it's achievable while they're still trying to complete, you know, these, these other life goals and aspirations, whether it's part-time school or, you know, school along the way or a job. I mean, it's really hard to say, uh, cause it's all just a, leap of faith you know like you never you could commit yourself and it could still hypothetically not work out or you commit yourself and that could be the difference maker but it's like very very hard to say now because these people like you said these let's say the pros that all got cut from the league and now are going to be playing in challengers those are people that made that leap and they are using this as like a rebound regain year so they are people that are fully committed for the year in challengers so it's going to be hard for you trying to come up and go against people that have committed their entire time, their entire dedication, their entire livelihood to it. So it's going to be difficult if you're managing two things. But I think just as for life, it's the best way to do it until you get that spark, like I said earlier. And then, you know, you can make that decision with some backing. Like, okay, I have this opportunity. It's better for me to just, you know, walk away from this job or like take a semester off school or whatever for a little bit because I got this chance. I think at the end of the day, it's about being, you know, being honest with yourself, right? And and yeah. what, you know, what's going to, you know, what's going to make you happy, what, you know, what's reasonable for, you know, for expectations for people to have of themselves. But um, so, so switching gears a little bit, as, I'm really curious. Uh, so as a main AR, what's like, how do you see the difference between 4v4 versus 5v5 purely from your, from your perspective uh, in the role that you play? um it's a very dramatic difference in my opinion uh in 5v5 like there was a main ar role but it was less almost less defined than it was in 4v4 because with 5v5 the game just played so much more like chaotic and also just fast paced and there's so many situations where they could be changed by variables like oh they decided on this push to break from this side instead of this side. So they stacked like four people here, they stacked three people here, whatever, there's extra person to throw around. But in 4v4, it almost becomes very uh, like robotic and consistent because there'll be like one way where they know this lane or this area is better to like stack or whatever. So you know, you can read the opposition a lot easier. And I think that helps greatly for main ARs because the game slows down. You know what lane is going to be like most important. You know, you can read the pressure of the enemy team uh, way easier and I think that definitely benefits main ARs because you don't have to be that type of player that's getting very mixy and like running around and doing too much you just got to do your job you got to set your team up for success and that's easier when you can read the other team's pressure and know what's going on consistently does that main AR role change if it's a two AR meta versus like does that change much or is that just really 
but nuance for the other players? Um, it doesn't really change too much because it just comes down to like natural play styles. Like if you're a main AR player, you have a the reason why they just call you main AR players because that's just your type of certain play style, and it would be like you know a little bit slower, uh, a little bit more attracted to the hill, uh, a little bit more holding lanes down, and then the second AR player would just you would obviously when you're making your team expect them to have a more like fluid, uh, less a little bit less like objective hill oriented type player for hardpoint, and then uh, let them be like more of a roamer AR, and while you're like holding stuff down, and it's not. The thing about it is when you have two ARs on the team, uh, it's not like, oh, this is my spot or this is my area because I'm a main AR. It's just it'll naturally happen like that. And if it doesn't naturally happen like that, you know, other AR could just do the same thing. And then you just got to you just have to know what you have to do in the right moment. You know, it's all about those situational plays. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's all situational. Like if Mike, for example, is the one by the hill or holding something. I can't be like, hey, I'm the main AR. You need to move and go do this and that. It's like, no, like, whoever's in the position just does what they need to do. And it, I, it's been interesting for me to kind of watch how that evolves over time. Like, you mentioned kind of starting, like, really, really competing in Black Ops 2, which, like, chef's kiss, perfect time to start. Um, yeah. Were you, like, were, even back then, were you that strong AR player? Like, were you anchoring and getting spawns? Yeah. But I've been an AR player basically my whole career besides um, the beginning of Advanced Warfare. When I qualified for the Pro League, I was an SMG player. And then like halfway through the season, I went back to being AR and then I haven't changed since. Nice. So you're also going to share with me your XMR class setup, right? Because I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I need help. I don't know. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> no, I'm sure we'll make uh, we'll make some loadout videos uh, when the game comes out, of course. Yeah. So everyone knows what you're rocking on the main AR uh, during scrims and everything. Um, I guess to kind of touch on the like just the future for, for you and the team before we let you go here. What are you seeing as, like, I know it's hard because it's only the beta and, you you know, it's it's kind of a new group of guys, like, obviously you're familiar with Attached and, and everything, but what are you seeing, like, that's really positive with the, the new lineup so far and what are you excited about for next season and getting started? Um, I think the biggest thing is I'll address just, like, the negative comments people had for us, I guess, but, like, just watching Preston stream and watching Dylan stream when they're playing the beta, just running around with subs, like, it doesn't look uncomfortable for them. It looks completely natural. They... They're just running around looking like an amazing sub player and if they feel comfortable. But a lot of people were saying that like Preston's more comfortable with the AR and this and that, but he looked fine to me running around with the, with those SMGs. Like the SMGs are crazy in this game. So I think it'll be very, very, very good for them. And also the fact that like the movement is a little bit more fast paced than we expected so far, unless they do more patching. And, you know, Mike has insane movement for an AR player. Like most AR players don't really have great movement and he does so that helps a lot for like that second ar type role he won't be like uncomfortable having to move around more on the map or whatever he's doing that gets me excited that's awesome yeah i watch um i watch attach and, and priest stream i'm just like bro how like i listen, <laughs> i know like i I've, i'm getting old i've been playing caught a long time but yeah i just watch some of their maneuverability i'm like what is going on how do they do it um uh, but yeah. it's, it's been really cool and it, be, it really makes me question like how you know extremely like recency biased some people can be like wasn't priest yeah. a, a entry sog on 100 t yeah he was crazy? and like yeah he was yeah he was it's like the fastest player on the team yeah probably one of the fastest players in the game because <laughs> i remember i remember how like cracked he was that was like when yeah. he really like i mean he had been recognized obviously before then but that was really when he got you know some some big big recognition um yeah I mean, he, like, Preston is one of the most talented people in the entire COD League. So there's absolutely, like, there's negative worry about what he can do or whatever he needs to adapt to or be comfortable with or whatever it is. Like, the kid's insane. So I'm not concerned at all about anyone saying that he's, like, he could be too slow or he won't be comfortable or whatever it is. Like, he's going to be fine. I like it. Let 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 whoever's saying that underestimate the team. That's, let's... Yeah. Let, let them talk. Uh, it all all that matters is how how you how you perform once exactly. it starts. Yeah, I mean, like to be honest, no matter what team is made, besides like certain players, like there's always going to be support 
which is great. You know, we see all the support, which is amazing. There's always going to be the people that doubt. And like that just that comes with the territory of being a professional in any regard of any like competitive thing. And it just comes on our back to perform the level that we expect ourselves to perform and just show everyone like what we were thinking and why we did what we did and why we built the team that we did and whatever it is. So it's just on us to perform and we're going to put in the work and, you know, hopefully come out and do what we need to do. Well, I, love it. I love it too. I know lots of Minnesota rocker fans are getting freaking hype at everything you just said. I'm freaking hype. I wish the season could start tomorrow, but we'll get there slowly, but surely. Um, just, yeah, really looking at, uh, looking forward to seeing what we can do. I think if there are people underestimating the team, that's probably a good thing for us. Like it's, it's it's hard to have that insurmountable kind of pressure on on yourself um especially with a new team right You're, if everyone has yeah. these crazy crazy expectations i do think though like especially within like the organization or even like like i know a ton of the minnesota rocker fans were stoked when we announced the new lineup like obviously you know sad to see the first year roster go because they're great guys but this this new roster has real potential to be trouble for a lot of a lot of teams next year so i know that that gets people hyped um, Lamar, we're going to let you go here, but is there anything you kind of want to say, like going out, like you're going to be streaming this weekend for the beta, you on Twitter, what, where, where can we find you? Yeah, I'll be streaming this weekend. My Twitch is just, uh, accuracy. So twitch.tv slash accuracy. And I just wanted to say, uh, thank you to all the Minnesota fans that have been showing us love coming in. You know, you guys have a awesome fan base and we're here to make you guys proud and just know that I'll be here to hold myself and my team accountable put in the work and do what we need to do to make sure that we deliver for you guys. You know, we'd want that support to go uh, unnoticed and we want to make you guys happy. Let's freaking go. Don't say that, bro. I'm getting too hype. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too hype, man. I want the season to start tomorrow. Well, thank you so much, Lamar, for taking the time. I know you're busy. I know you want to go play the beta, so I'll let you go to do that. Brett, uh, any, any kind of final words uh, to, to say on the way out here? No, thanks for joining us. Um, I'm, I'm psyched for the season. It, you know, it can't get here soon enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to getting my kids to sleep tonight and jumping into the beta myself. <laughs> I'll you see go. you on the battlefield. <laughs> I, I, well, I hope, I hope I, not. I hope not, <laughs> but uh, you, know, you never know. Maybe just give me the class and just pretend I'm not on the same game as you. That's all. <laughs> all right. Appreciate you, Lamar. Thank you, everyone, for listening and watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, rate the podcast on whatever podcasting app you're listening on, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for listening.